So, so I, I guess our first question would be to um, just maybe define what a skill is, right? Exactly. And what more specifically interpersonal skills are, because that's what most students are, you know, curious about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, thank you very much, first of all, for having me here, Sonia and Samir. I really appreciate it and welcome everyone uh, to this session. I'm happy to be here to talk a little bit about skills and why they are important. Um, so skills are, let's, you know, defining skills. We, we want to try to say that, you know, uh, skills are the ability to do something well. Uh, it's an ability that comes from your knowledge and your practices and your aptitudes and a lot more. Interpersonal skills in particular are the skills we use every day when we communicate and when we interact with uh, other people, either individually or as part of a group. Um, so that's why interpersonal skills are very, very important. These skills are you know, things like your listening and effective speaking skills, they're a little bit different than your communication skills. They're under the umbrella of communication skills. Uh, communication skills uh, are, you know, writing, presenting, um, and uh, for example, speaking uh, to a large uh, group, for example. Interpersonal skills are, you know, advising, listening, coaching, interviewing. These are the differences. Um, they, um, they are also the ability to control and manage our emotions. So personal skills are very, very important, especially when you are, um, you know, in a job uh, working and also working in teams and with other people. And that's why um, they are very, very important. Sonia. <clears throat> why do you think those skills are important? So uh, those skills are important because we use them in everyday life. We use them in school. We use them uh, while we volunteer. We are doing extracurricular activities on the job, um, whether it's a part time, full time or even a casual position. You're using your interpersonal skills. Um, you also kind of build confidence. Whenever you gain a skill or you develop it or you use it, you feel confident about what you're doing. Um, so, um, you know, it's kind of learning and acquiring also new abilities uh, every day. It's uh, something that we do continuously. It's not just one time. We're always going to be developing skills. <clears throat> Um, it's also great for our career development. So uh, the more you move in your career, the more you'll gain skill, you'll acquire new ones, um, you'll utilize them in your job. Uh, you might work in a, in a specific uh, company for a bit and then move to another company where you'll learn more skills and acquire uh, different ones as well. It helps us really also, you know, understanding our skills will help us write a really good resume and a cover letter. It will help us with your, with, uh, you know, when you go to an interview. Um, it also helps you, you know, understand what you have in terms of things that you have developed. So you can speak about your skills really well in an interview. Um, interpersonal skills are also important because you know, they help you accomplish tasks. Um, you know, you communicate with people, with your colleagues, with customers, with teams. So it's not just, you know, while you're working, you can be in school working on a project. So you gain skills from working on a team through a project. So it's not static just for a job. It's everything you do, like in our personal life, when we communicate with our family and also friends, as well as, for example, projects, uh, when you're working on doing presentations or um, helping each other complete tasks, as well as in your job. So that's why they're really, really important as well. And do we gain those skills from other, um, other places apart from what you just mentioned, for example, um, family and you know working with people. Yeah, so you gain skills from everything you do. You gain it from um, being uh, like having your own personal life and 
talking to your family, your friends, and your colleagues from work as a part-time and a summer uh, job or a casual job or even, um, you know, a short-time contract position. You're gaining skills. You're learning new things while you're on the job. Uh, extracurricular activities are so important. So any activity, for example, that you do while you're at school uh, or outside in the community, like your volunteer work, you gain skills. Like um, today, for example, you're hosting this session, you're gaining presentation skills and communication skills and ability to relate to uh, people in the audience. Uh, tomorrow, when um, one of you goes out to the work uh, world, you'll be able to, for example, organize events. Let's say you organized an event at a community center for your or, um, you know, student club, you'll be able to organize an event at work. So they're very, very um, malleable and transferable from the different jobs. That's super interesting because we learn skills from everywhere. And there yes. are so many that many times we go there to write our resume and we're like, do we, mm. do we even have skills? Exactly. <laughs> so it's important to know this. Yeah. And and honestly, that's the number one question that I get a lot of the time is I don't know what skills that I need to put on my resume. Yeah, so. exactly. I had that problem many times. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you for that. And what are the different types of skills? Because there's many different types that you need to list in the resume in other ways as well. Like there's soft and hard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned soft and hard and very much so. Uh, they're defined as um, uh, there's different types of skills and they come in a variety. So personal qualities um, skills are skills that are innate to us. You know, you're kind of have them, uh, you're born with them, like your sense of humor or your ability to, uh, you know, um, um, you know, um, to talk to people or your ability, for example, to manage and motivate people. These are very, very personal and innate to us and everybody's different. Uh, specific knowledge skills or what we call technical skills are skills that are learned. So you can learn this, uh, those types of skills from either being in school or on the job or taking a specific course. And these can be uh, you know, for example, program specific or work specific for, for example, accounting students, they might learn SAGE uh, or ACPAC or QuickBooks. Uh, for a doctor, they might have to learn how to use a stethoscope or for statisticians, they need to know some software specific to statistics engineers, um, you know, or people that work in labs, they have to have uh, laboratory experience uh, or skills. So everybody is different in terms of the skills, the harder skills that they acquire. We call them hard skills or technical skills. And then uh, transferable skills. So transferable skills are the majority of our skills. And these are skills that are called transferable because you can take them from one job to another. Um, so those are so important and very valuable, uh, and they are usually the most of the skills that you have. So communication skills, interpersonal skills, um, organizational uh, time management all fall under um, transferable skills. So I these see. are the main three types of categories that uh, skills fall under. And between all those skills, <laughs> How do I know what skills I particularly have and what oh, can I put in the resume? Yeah, I really like that question. I think uh, it's very, very important to understand what skills we have. Um, we, um, we need to look at, think about maybe re a reflection exercise for yourself. Think about the different uh, experiences that you have from the past. Uh, write them down. Think about what are some of the skills I gained from that particular experience? What are some of the things I did well? What are some of the things that I want to further develop? So really, really, really important to write everything down because you need to be able to describe it in detail. Like, how did you do it? What steps did you take uh, to, to do this particular experience? 
uh, write it down in details because that's how you start seeing patterns in how you developed your skill. And then um, think about like what you feel most proud of that particular experience that you accomplished because that becomes the accomplishment. So what happens is, for example, on a resume, many people might put down, uh, I have excellent communication skills. But for example, for somebody like me looking at a resume, I'll say, well, you know, how, so everybody can say I have good communication skills. How are yours different? So that's why it's important to reflect on the skill to see how you developed it, because you'll be able to talk about it uh, in better ways. So um, I have excellent communication skills. I developed them through my two years experience as a customer service, uh, you know, position at Home Depot for example, right? So um, yeah, and um, try to do that for all the experiences that you have, uh, because the more you have an understanding of how you've developed your experiences, the better understanding you have of the type of skills um, that you actually have in your roster. Yes, so that's so why I think, yeah. I'm sorry, so it's always better to have a background on everything that you uh, list on the resume, for example. Yeah, because we're always doing new things, right, Sonia? We we do, for example, a job or we maybe do a project or uh, we maybe volunteer. So all of these are experiences that you can start pulling skills and reflecting on them. Yeah. So did you want to mention anything else? Because I interrupted you, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. That's uh, exactly what I think uh, people should probably think about maybe putting together a list of where they've developed those skills, write them down, reflect on each of the experiences, and then note uh, which skills you've developed and how you've developed them. That's, That's one great. of the best ways. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the skills that employers particularly usually look for? Yeah. And, um, and, and I think employers are very big on skills. So they speak the skills language. So every time, you know, you see a job, it has skills in it. When you go to an interview, you're asked about your skills and experiences. When you are, uh, for example, writing your resume, you're adding your skills to that. So that's why employers speak the skills language. Um, they actually um, look for many, many different things. So the Conference Board of Canada actually did research with a bunch of employers, so many employers, about what are some of the top skills that they look for. And they came back in a few categories. So fundamental skills are your communication, uh, and of course, interpersonal falls under communication, managing information, using numbers, um, as well as thinking and solving problems, which are your analytical skills. So those are some of the fundamental uh, skills that employers look for. And then personal management skills are skills such as being having a good positive attitude, being able to relate to people, uh, taking responsibility, learning on the job, as well as uh, um, working safely very important uh, set of skills that they look for in terms of personal management. And then of course, teamwork skills, which is the ability to work with other people, interact with them and complete projects, for example. Uh, so these are some of the top skills that they uh, really, really look for. Now, uh, people can go actually onto the website for the Conference Board of Canada and read uh, all the list of skills that uh, usually employers look for uh, in detail. Uh, I'll try to put that, um, that um, website on uh, the chat uh, when we open it up for Q&A uh, because they can print out the list and then do like check uh, mark all the skills that uh, you might have developed through that. That's nice. And also, if I'm not wrong, when you're applying to a job, there, uh, there are lists of skills that they need um, the applicants to have, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so we usually can, the job description for sure. Yeah. So we can elaborate our uh, resume on that as well, right? Like we yeah. see the skill and oh, I have that, so I'm, I'm gonna put it, 
right? Yeah. So that's a really good point, Sonia. So maybe if I can take a second to to mention something. Yeah. So when you're applying for a position, what you want to do is look at the job description. Maybe take a highlighter and highlight all the skills that our employers looking for, and then try to sh to showcase those skills in some of the things that you've completed on your resume. Uh, and that way you're really matching your skills with what the employer is looking for. Exactly. And many of us don't have a lot of uh, experience in the past with jobs or volunteering. So if I, or if I don't have a lot of skills in general, what do I do and how is it possible for me to develop my interpersonal skills? Oh, good point. So, um, you know, we we do have skills. I think if everybody remembers that you already have skills because you've developed some skills, uh, let's say you haven't worked, but you already have developed some skills from uh, your personal life, from your extracurricular activities, let's say you volunteered outside in the community or you helped neighbor, you know, complete a, a project or a task or your family. So you've already developed some of those skills. Think about when you were in high school school, some of the uh, projects that you've completed and some of the works and the clubs that you were uh, on, for example, and also here uh, at college, all the things that you're doing in terms of your additional uh, work that you do. Um, if you if you feel you don't have a lot, think about your project work through school. Uh, you can pull some, uh, you know, start pulling some skills from there. Uh, there are a lot of skills that you develop while studying, working with your groups uh, on completing certain projects, um, your reading, your writing, your presentation skills. These are all skills you can uh, add in your resume uh, and as well as any additional work that you might have done, not necessarily paid work. Uh, that could be through volunteer work or extracurricular activities or any other uh, activities that you've done. Um, you know, so uh, if you also have done any co-op or internships, uh, summer jobs are part of that, um, as well as uh, any additional courses or training that will help you for sure develop further skills. Yeah. And now that you made me think about it, I think we have a course outlined for every subject, right? And yes. there's skills listen, listed on that as well. You can exactly. see which skills we're going to develop uh, during the semester and yes. what we end up having. So, like, I thought about it right now <laughs> that you mentioned everything. So, that's a good thing. Amazing. And Excellent point. And if you see that there are skills that you are um, going to have in that particular project, but you don't have, that would be skills that you are going to be developing, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, very good note. So as a future employee, what can I do to make myself attractive to employers? Because they receive a lot of requests and applications. So yeah. you want to send out, right? Yeah. So yeah, thank you. That's a great question as well. So really understanding what the employer is looking for. And we, we meet so many employers on campus. We invite them to sessions. We invite them to career fairs. They come to talk about their organizations and they always, always say, you know, attitude for them is really important. Having a good attitude is one of the top skills that they look for. But of course, your interpersonal skills, your ability to relate to people. So to make yourself attractive, you need to understand what the employer is looking for. Do a little bit of research about their organization. Do a little bit of research about who they are. What do they value as a company? What do they value as, you know, having uh, people working for them, for their teams? Uh, look at their mission, look at their vision. How long have they been in business? Uh, what do they do? Do they sell products or do they sell information? Um, and so the more research you know about the organization, the better you can situate yourself in terms of um, you know, uh, making yourself attractive to that particular employer, um, as well as, you know, uh, you know, that will help you really tailor also your documents, your resume, your cover letter, 
which we briefly chatted about in terms of understanding the skills that they're looking for and trying to uh, make sure that you're maximizing your resume and showing them that you've developed those skills. Uh, if you have them, you can demonstrate where you've uh, where you've shown them uh, as an experience uh, in terms of um, as well as skills. But uh, if you haven't, maybe you can show them as where you've developed them through your projects or your courses. Uh, so these are some of the things you can do. Also, trying to uh, meet them whenever they're here on campus, chat, chatting with them, networking with them. That really starts a connection. That helps you, you know, present yourself in a really good way. Um, it shows them that you're interested in their organization. They might just be coming to meet some students and to say hello and network and tell you about their organization. Uh, but at the same time, they are keeping an eye for people who have made a good connection. So that's uh, why also interpersonal skills are very, very Im important because um, your ability to connect with someone uh, nowadays, of course, uh, on camera is um, is is uh, greatly important. Yeah, I agree with everything, and thank you so much for. Uh, answering these questions, um, I appreciate your help and also like we all need somebody who answers these questions since we all go to interviews, many interviews and we don't know what we're gonna need to do to get a job or, you know, it's very hard in the career bubble. Of the world. <laughs> yeah, and and I think uh, and thanks for mentioning that, Sonia, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to help you. Um, we are career development uh, office. Um, there are uh, five of us, uh, four additional colleagues of mine. We all work with all students from all the different programs. So you don't, you know, need to try to find out who covers your program. We all help. Um, so uh, feel free to reach out to us. I'm going to put our email um, in the chat. And um, if you find us, you can actually over here look for um, how to book your appointments. You can book it through Seneca Works. Seneca, Seneca Works is our job board. Um, it's a job board for Seneca students where all employers um, that want a position, uh, sorry, post a position will post with us there. Um, you can join Seneca Works to take a look at the jobs or you can through Seneca Works also book an appointment to uh, meet with one of us and discuss, uh, you know, either your resume or cover letter. Uh, if you have questions about your interview or your networking, um, we do uh, workshops every month. Um, we rotate the workshops. We do so many of them, uh, everything from resumes to interviews to career planning. I think there's one today about career planning. Uh, additionally, we do LinkedIn um, as lots of panels that we do throughout the year. So anything you want to know that we're running will be on our uh, workshop calendar. Uh, of events. So feel free to join us for that. Um, just one other thing I want to mention that Seneca Works is available uh, for students to use for now and for two years after you graduate. So make sure to take full advantage of that. That's very useful. <laughs> yeah, our services as well. So all of our services as well as the job board is available for all students for two years after you graduate. It's yeah. super good that you're doing yeah. this um, to help students because we it's hard to be a student and also future employee. And yeah. maybe when we graduate, we don't know where to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're looking like desperately for a job and stuff. So yeah. Um, so thank you for that. <laughs> and make no sure problem. you use these services because it's it's there for you. And yeah. Do we have any questions, Sonia, that we need to answer? I'm not sure if, uh, let me. No, um, that's it for uh, me. Sorry, okay. there's one question. Oh, thanks, Samir. No problem. Uh, the question is, uh, what should we never mention as a skill? Any taboos? Uh, what, what should we never mention as a skill? Yeah, yes, any taboos. Oh, that's any it. taboos? Yes. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think uh, in an interview, 
um, you, your skills are your skills. So I think maybe what you're trying to mention here is, is there something I shouldn't be mentioning in an interview, which I can cover in a second, but your skills are your skills. If you've developed a skill, uh, then it's a skill that you work with. Um, I think, uh, especially if you are trying to match it to the employer. So maybe a guide for you is if you take a look at what the employer is looking for in terms of skills and experiences and try to relate the skills you have to those uh, skills and experiences that the employer is looking for. Uh, I think maybe if you don't want to mention something in the interview, stay away from anything uh, personal about your previous position, for example. Uh, you don't want to, you know, say anything bad about, you know, your previous employer. So always stay professional uh, when you're uh, discussing your experiences and your skills with an employer. Always, always maintain that professional, um, you know, uh, conversation. The next question is, what are some resources that we can use to strengthen our interpersonal skills? Also, are there any books that we can read, clubs or groups that we can join to practice our interpersonal skills on a continuous basis? Wow, amazing question. I love that question. Yes, we have tons of resources uh, for sure. Uh, our library, if you go under career development, there's, uh, um, you know, they always have um, books there that you can kind of take a quick look at. Uh, additionally, I think in terms of to further develop your skills, you know, um, I know that at Seneca, we have many different student clubs, uh, but really it depends on what your preference is in terms of a student club. So, for example, uh, you can you can pertain to a, to a student club that is around your program. Uh, I know, for example, the accounting uh, program has one, so that's a great um, a student club if you're in accounting. They're called SLAFs. Uh, there are other additional um, student clubs that might be more around your hobbies or your interests. Uh, so take a look at that. Maybe, Samir, if you know where uh, a link, uh, if you can add that link, do you know the link to the student sure. clubs? I will post it in a yeah. second. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's great. You get to uh, meet people very like mind, uh, you know, um, you know, think they think like you or they share the same uh, interests. So you get to have a lot of conversations around that. I think that's a really good place uh, um, to join. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. If there are uh, other clubs that are more also related to your program, that would be a, a very good uh, place as well. Uh, you can further develop your interpersonal skills by also trying to do uh, additional, um, you know, experiences or activities either through your program or out in the community. Great. Thank you so much. I have posted no the club's link in the chat. Uh, Great. In the chat. So um, if you have any questions regarding that, uh, please Perfect. send us an email and we'll be able to answer them for you. The next question is, uh, you mentioned at the end of the session, you'll share links for skills yes, employers I'm, are looking for. I am going to do that while we're talking. I'm just going to quickly Google the link. It's called the Conference Board of Canada. Also, sorry to interrupt, um, guys, it's your chance to ask questions um, so Hannah can reply and you can solve your doubts about this skills talk, let's say. Um, so feel free to just ask questions while we're here. Okay, so here's the Conference Board of Canada uh, checklist that you can go on there and uh, take a look at some of the skills that um, the Conference Board of Canada did research in, on in terms of employability skills. The other thing is we have also developed a really good skills workshop. It's called Identifying Your Skills. <laughs> Excuse me, I think we did it uh, last week. Uh, we just presented it last week. We'll probably be presenting it again and again uh, in the new semester. So feel free to join us for that as well. But if you have any questions about your skills, you can always reach out to one of the career coordinators, book an appointment, and have a conversation. 
Okay, I think uh, we have a couple of questions for the SSF. Yes. Uh, are clubs only open to full time students? Yes, uh, clubs are only <coughs> open to uh, full time students at the moment. Uh, but there are other ways uh, you can be involved uh, at, at a college level, I believe. Um, so how many clubs can we join? Is there a limit? Uh, there's no limit to the amount of clubs you can join. You could be an executive only for one club, but you can join as many clubs as you'd like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can be on the board of the club. So you can be the treasurer or you can be a member or you can be one of their executives. So all all those type of positions even on a student club demonstrates um you know uh, the fact that you were one engaged number two interested in not only just attending school but you also did additional experiences and of course number three you gained so much more skills absolutely and and also in addition to that uh, there's the option of networking uh, you're, of course. you're able to meet uh, internal and external uh, st stakeholders, so there's a lot yeah. of benefits to being a club. Yeah, and a lot of those uh, clubs, as far as I understand, they also bring employers on uh, on board, and if they don't bring employers, they always have connections, so great opportunities to network as well. Thanks, Samir. No problem. There's another question. Um, yeah. If I understand correctly, after we graduate, can we have access to to the clubs and other services for two years right um for clubs unfortunately once you do graduate uh you no longer can uh be a part of the club uh you can uh, there, we, we have different ways you can be involved in supporting an existing club however you're not uh, going to be able to be a member after graduation because it's only open to full-time current students mm -hmm. however uh Maybe Hannah, you can speak speak to uh, Seneca Services. Yeah, so career development is, uh, so when I refer to the two years, that's specifically to career development services and resources. Uh, so you have access to uh, appointments, you have access to the job board, you have access to our services, like um, you know, coming in and meeting with one of the coordinators, attending workshops, uh, you have access for two years after you graduate so now while you're in school as well as after you graduate if you want to know for like other services like email and uh, access to library and so forth unfortunately i wouldn't know that you would have to connect with alumni the alumni office they'll be able to tell you the access that you would have after graduation but uh fear not for career development you'll have access to us for two years after graduation Um, there's another question. One of my interests is writing. Are there any opportunities outside of clubs to get together with other writing students uh, slash professors to work on a writing project? It's a really good question. I don't know if there's a writing club, Samir, but yeah, of course, that's one of one way to do it. What I would do is maybe see if there are maybe volunteer opportunities that you could do writing. Um, you could, you know, maybe think about, um, you know, connecting with some few other people that have started writing blogs, for example. That's a really good way to keep on writing and in, in, improve your writing. Um, I would also encourage you to connect with some of your professors and see if there are any other any opportunities to help them with writing, um, you know, materials. Uh, there might be a way that you could do that, uh, or they might be able to refer you to other people that they know that are doing some writing. So there's always opportunity. I think you really just need to uh, look at look at where uh, it might be. Uh, if you do any volunteer opportunities, maybe just make sure that you have a big component of writing in it. Um, I like the fact that you mentioned that because that also shows interest in the career area that you might um, want to get into. Uh, so when you're looking into your career areas, always look at opportunities that the career will give you in terms of writing, for sure. Any other questions? <clears throat> Not at the moment, maybe. If right. you have any other questions, uh, this is your opportunity or uh, also I think uh, a link uh, has been or an email address has been.
provided by the career development team. Uh, you can always reach out to the team at any time. Wonderful. Awesome. I think that's all for now. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me to have a conversation today. That was really great. Thank you for coming because it's very useful for everybody. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, I wish you all the best. Stay safe um, and feel free to connect with us. Uh, we're here right until uh, the uh, the closure for the holiday. Um, and then we're back right again in the new year. We work right through the summer. So uh, we're always here for you. So uh, remember to reach out and uh, connect with us, attend our workshops, go to our um, calendar events, uh, register for any workshop that you feel might help you. Uh, if you miss one, don't worry, we'll be running them again. Um, so uh, you'll always have opportunities to do so. One other last thing I want to mention, we will be having a career fair in the new semester in February, and that's the week of February the 1st. Uh, many, many employers will be coming to talk to students and meet with them and network. So please make sure to, um, you know, book it in your calendar to check our website and see who's coming. Uh, so you can come and have the opportunity to network and have conversations. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks. There's a last question. Uh, will the webinar be emailed to us? Um, I'm not sure about that, Samir. Will it? Um, I think you're posting it somewhere, right? Oh, this the info. Uh, we will be posting it on uh, IGTV on the Seneca SSF Instagram page. Great. But I don't believe it will be emailed out. Yeah, so uh, I guess it'll be posted on Instagram. So you'll be able to uh, watch it there as well. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Samir and Sonia. It was great uh, chatting with you today. And everyone in the audience, thank you so much for coming. And uh, we hope we see you again. Stay well, stay healthy. Good luck on your, um, you know, assignments and exams. And uh um, have a good break afterwards. Okay. Thank you so much for everything. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.